because I'm, uh, as I said, perturbed by the experience we had with the dogs. And just when we pulled up here, Bam Bam and Cha Cha, they already started barking. Um, you know, just with somebody walking past again, these are not things that you want. I know I get the messages, literally. Hey, I, w I don't want my dog, literally. I'm a screenshot and I ain't gonna put their name, but I don't want my dog to run up on people. I don't want it to be so friendly and always wants to go get pet. I'm like, there's a time and place for everything. And I'd rather my dog know that uh, people are safe to them for the most part and teach them discernment. You know what discernment is? It's your ability to see what may come and even more importantly, how to judge. It's judgment at its finest. So we've got some work to do. Jamarcus, come tell them about the things that you've seen with Tut and then I will piggyback off that while I get Bam Bam and Cha Cha set up. Absolutely, absolutely. So one thing I'm seeing with Tut for sure personally that he's definitely Baloo's son. He carries that, that chill mode at times, but of course he has the capabilities of his mom. Now with the Baloo side of things, if you've seen in other videos with Baloo specifically, you know he, as you've heard Trev say, he likes to incite a riot. He likes to start stuff. And you can see that 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 scary timidness in the boys and even sometimes the girls, but more, for the most part it's in the boys. It's more evident in the boys what I'm seeing, especially in Tut specifically. So he likes to chill, he'll get a little scared at times, but even though he knows he can go do all the things that his brothers and sisters can do and his mom can do, he becomes a very independent thinker individual and I remember messing with Blue early on he didn't want to do anything and I see that in his eyes at times I see that and he'll just sit there and just kind of stare at you that blank stare that Blue does famous blank stare and he'll do that and he's just like yeah I could do it but I don't want to do it so that's what I'm seeing with Seth specifically so I just need to spit like he's been saying we got to double down on everything with him I haven't been spending as much time as I would like and I try to as much as possible but as you guys see we do a lot of stuff here so this just mean like you said more work so again, Tut's a, uh, we'll say, he's a sure, insecure dog. <sighs> Give me a pass. Trying to get this thing set up. <sighs> it's going to be a day, I tell you that. And that means you have to make sure you work through insecurities because he will become, not a danger, because Tut's not the dog that's going to run off and attack somebody. He's a dog who's going to be like, throw the middle finger. He's a guy like this, whatever you say, but, I, but F you. So... Cha Cha and Bam Bam, they see something. And I've seen it at the park, we've been at the park before. And Cha Cha Bam Bam will start barking and he'll run that way. Cha Cha will run that way. They're not scary dogs. And the problem with a not scary dog that, that's actually a scary dog is you run into a scary problem because then they're like, what's up? What's up? So we're gonna we're gonna separate, take time individually, and then we'll meet back in the middle. And then we'll talk about the things that we saw, things that we'll learn how they went, how they did. Um, while passing people and dogs and whatnot, and uh, we'll give you a scoop. But Arbor Hill is a nature reserve that I love. There's dogs, there's people, there's people running, there's spiking, all the things that they haven't seen, so they gotta get used to this. And then by normally the third time, it's a Sunday money. For the next three days, I'll be up here at some point, but that's it, that, that, that's it. The next three days, they will at least do one to two miles at this park, period. And that's the bottom line. Stay tuned, take care of your dogs. So, so far, show the nature preserve. It's kind of where we're at. There's people walking, families out, dogs. Uh, you know, one person already said, hey, those puppies? And yeah, they kind of walk up. Guy drops his hand. Cha-Cha approaches. Bam Bam's a little tumultuous. He starts, you know, up. So, another place that I'll go and I'll show you and actually walk you through why I'm doing it. It's the Farmer's Mart. I love that place. You sit down and you just pause and allow people to go through the dog and the dog to get familiar with foot traffic and all that other stuff. But I look at them now. <laughs> they got, we got a lot of work to do. I mean, they're literally babies and they're animals, people. You have to keep remembering they're animals. So stay tuned as we give you a synopsis of what we look for, why the days like this are important. Show up this right here. Got a guy running, got families walking. Them getting out. Dogs just approached a minute ago as well. They did pretty good. No, no problem there. But again, just gonna keep teaching and helping to the best of my ability, all right? All through the ball in this particular part. Tuck went in, he turned back around. Bam Bam's a little fussy. He knows he's over there. So what I'm gonna do is, is to have Marcus walk you through. 
for one, what he experienced, but let's see if Ben Ben can figure this out. Again, sometimes you guys perceive confidence. See if these dogs can figure some things out. <coughs> as, uh, <coughs> as, you know, strength would say. That's probably the most capable. Bam Bam at times is the most willing. He's thinking it through. He knows where the ball's at. Hey, hey, get out. He knows where the ball's at, but they're afraid to go get it. And you know, those balls ain't that expensive. We just like, we chuck it up. Because either he wants to go get it or he doesn't. I think it's moving now. Yeah, it went down that way. I think it's running downstream now. Might be lost. Marcus has another ball in his pocket. Go over there and see if you can grab it. Yep. Whew. Dogs are very jumpy, very fussy. Marcus came down, they were barking at him. Again, all these behaviors have to be corrected. And I mean quick. I mean quick in my experience way before they get six months. So stay tuned, take care of your dogs, people. And we'll talk some more here in a second. Learn from Tuck. What, what you think you have to do moving forward? How you gonna be able to help? Uh, so with Tuck, man, you know, every time he saw a person, he'd just stop. And once again, as I said earlier, that's a Baloo tendency. When I used to try to take Baloo on walks, the same thing would happen. We, we couldn't even get out the front door. He'd, he'd pump the brakes. Tut thankfully has capabilities of, of his mom. So he's able to come out the front door. He's able to come out to these environments to a degree, but when it comes to people, he always gets very nervous. I've noticed that through this whole walk, every time he sees someone, he kind of just like slow up or stop, kind of pump the brakes. And I always have to regain his attention by either the ball or something like that, just so he can focus a little bit. And then once they walk by, I'd reward him. So like, yo, it's all good. And we kind of did that along the walk. And every time we did that, he gained a little more confidence. He wasn't so unsure as more and more people started to come by. Then when dogs would start to walk by, same thing would happen, he'd freeze. So, you know, just like Trev said, we gotta double down on their exposure. Just like he said, I'm gonna have to bring them out here at the very least, bare minimum, three times a week. And honestly, that's probably still not enough, but he needs to be around as many people as possible in these type of settings, where I'm comforting him, letting him know it's all good. When we got to the tower, one thing that we did, right, we were there, we just sat on a bench. I took this out of, you know, Trev's playbook. We went down to the farmer's market. I watched him do the same thing before. We went into the farmer's market. He sat down on a bench with Tron and Bam Bam. And you can go find that episode somewhere else, but he just sat there. And he, he sat there for about 15 minutes. And what he was doing, he was allowing them to adjust to the environment, get used to all the crazy sounds that were happening, get used to seeing all these people walk by, etc. So that's the same thing that we did. When we got to the tower, we sat down on the bench for a little while, people riding by on bikes, people walking by with their dogs, people just walking by in general all those kind of things and um, those things and me comforting him, him sitting between my legs and just petting them and this is all this happened, he gave me, he got a little more and more sure. Now, to be clear, he's gonna need more and more of that. And um, there's one thing that, you know, I've been very fortunate to learn being with Trevor over these years is when we were doing, t if, and when we were doing T-Fit, you know, the, the rule was simple. It's 100 or nothing, 100 reps bare minimum. He could tell you five movements and you wouldn't even ask the question, how many reps? It was always bare minimum 100. And in this situation, it's gonna have to come down to that. 100 reps, the first 10 reps are always gonna suck. But it's those last 10 reps are the ones that are gonna always be the best because you've worked through mastering the movement, making your adjustments through going through 100 reps. So that's what we're gonna have to do with Tut. We're gonna have to put him through 100 reps because he's gonna need that time because he has those blue tendencies. He's timid at times, he has the, he's a little scared, but he's capable. That's the thing, he's capable. So building his confidence, 100 reps or nothing, bare minimum for him. Um, and, you know, it can be discouraging at times, but as long as you stick to stay to the course and finish, that's what's most, most important, so. Well, we know Jamarcus is long-winded per usual. <laughs> um, can they see me in the frame? Okay, so look, guys, he said a lot of good things. Take heed to what he's saying. I'm gonna tell you some more stuff in the very near future. Cha-Cha and Bam Bam, they're the same way, but they're, unlike him, they actually will run up to somebody, be barking, hooping and hollering, jump on you and carry on. And all those things have to be fixed quick as well because they're doing it oftentimes out of fear. And as he said, I used to sit over in that corner right there with Zar, sit over there with Ego, sit over there and he would try. I mean, he recorded some stuff with Tron one day that I was doing up here. I'd come up here like church because I know the impact. And remember, overstimulating a dog too quick can cause uh, a lot of problems long term, just like any of us. If the first time you did something you didn't like it because you went with the wrong person, 
that's an experience and it potentially scars you. You go with the right person, like, oh no, we're gonna do this first. We're gonna do this, and you're like, oh, that makes more sense. It feels better when you do it. You know what I, you know what I, you know what I mean? So what you want to do is take your time with your dog. They've got some behaviors that we need to correct. They're uh, a little too jumpy at people. Don't like that. They're a little too fussy with people they know. Jamarcus came down the hill. They was fussing at him. Like, what you fussing at him for? You literally see him almost every day. They fussy at me last night. <laughs> I feed them every day. Nobody else even feeds the dogs. Literally, I give them their food and their bowls and have been doing so because in the first six months for me, I know how important it is for me to be the person that takes care of them. And then from there, I can manage growth and all that other stuff. But let me be very clear in saying this. 99% of every problem in life, you probably had your hand in. Unless you was dealt some effed up cards. At this point, this is strictly user error. We are completely accountable for the position that they're in, knowing what we're dealing with. We, I know what Zara is. I know what Maya is. I know what Ego is. I know what Tron is. I definitely know what Baloo is. And those are also my fears. Because now, while I've suffered per se, and there's no suffering, it's just part of the process, especially when you don't do things right. You go, okay, we got we got we gotta go build some other things up. Got a lot of great messages, so thanks everybody for watching. Stay tuned, taking your dogs. More education coming soon.